Well, thank you for having me. Um, I can't really see you very well, but that's okay. I know I'm in the spotlight and you can see me. Um, you know, this is a blessing for me. I've heard good things about what's happening here, not only on campus, but within the athletic teams. And uh, to know that there are those that are going out there and learning at, at a young age how to take Christ into everything that they do, including on the sports field, um, is powerful. And know that God, um, obviously God wants us to do that and that people can see that, that the testimony of Christ goes throughout the way that you guys play the game as well and the way that you react, the way that we react as athletes to uh, success and failure, right? Because uh, there's failure in everything that we do on the athletic field as well. And I particularly get to play a sport that uh, as a hitter, there is way more failure than there is success. And that has taught me a lot. Um, God has taught me a lot through that. And my story is really not a story about what I have learned as much as it's a story about what God has been teaching me. And uh, I, I am still learning the same lessons that I've learned for years. Uh, God is still changing my heart as he did the first day I accepted him into it. And as the Holy Spirit works in my life, throughout the game and throughout my life, um, there's, there's constantly things that have to be changed. And um, if I could share uh, my, my life verse, that I've, it's been my go-to verse for years and years, um, I'll share that with you today. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, For I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and delivered himself up for me. I grew up in a small town in Eureka, Illinois. Uh, that was the name of the town. It's uh, about 4,000 people, 5,000 people now maybe. It's growing, booming. Um, small high school, about 600 kids in my high school. Uh, it's a farm, farming community near the city of Peoria, Illinois. And Illinois is really, when, you, when it comes to sports, it's, a, it's more of a basketball and football state than it is a baseball state. And growing up, I, I was involved in lots of sports. I was involved in baseball, basketball, football. I ran cross country. I played some soccer. I uh, did everything I could do. And, and especially in a small town, if you're an athlete, you play all the sports if you can. It wasn't just one sport that I was focused on. But I had the opportunity to do a lot, and we, you know, I, I had a lot of success. I was a good athlete even at a young age, but I was pretty small. I was five foot five, 112 pounds, going into my freshman year of high school, and uh, my voice hadn't changed. Um, I was five seven, 120 pounds, going into my sophomore year. Still, my voice hadn't changed. It was embarrassing at that point. And, um, and really, as I uh, matured, I finally grew my junior year a little bit. Um, and then senior year, I graduated at six foot one, 160 pounds. So I was not a big athlete, but I was a, a, a pretty good athlete regardless. And in a small town, being a good athlete, um, it was very important to me to succeed and win and achieve. And I was very competitive, super competitive. If you're, a, if you're gonna be a good athlete, you have to be super competitive. And so I was, and I had accepted Christ into my life at an early age. I went to a Bible church. I understood a lot about the Bible. I understood the gospel. At a young age, I found out that the truth that I was a sinner, that God was a holy God, and that there was no way for me to have a relationship with him without there being a righteous sacrifice in my place. And in the Old Testament, you know, they were sacrificing animals to make that happen, to, to, to be made right with God. And it still wasn't working because regardless, that sin, you know, it, 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 was, it was constant sacrifice over and over and over again. But then I heard about the final sacrifice that was made, the sacrifice of Christ's righteous life and his blood on the cross and how that was spilt for me. And as a young person, I accepted that pretty much out of fear of hell. 
I understood that when I died, my life was not going to end there. Uh, my spiritual life would continue either in heaven or hell. And I didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> you know, pretty easy decision if you believe in those other truths I just talked about. And so I accepted Christ. And so I lived um, with Christ in mind in everything that I did. But sports were so important to me. And what I didn't realize is that I had a relationship with God based on Christ. And I had, my faith was in Christ. But my life was all about sports. It was all about my activity, my sporting game that night. And, and what was I most emotionally attached to? What was I most in love with in my life? It was my sport. Whatever it was, whatever the season was, baseball, basketball, football, cross country, what, whatever I was doing, I was more involved in that than I was in my relationship with Christ. In my senior year of high school, I was in an undefeated basketball season with uh, uh, my team, who guys that I'd grew up, grow up, grown up with playing. Basketball was like my first love as a sport. So this was really more, uh, more important to me than baseball. And, and so we're in an undefeated season, and uh, we got the whole town following us to games. So, you know, basically, you know, the, the, these small gyms that we're playing in are packed every night. And so you just feel, I felt like, you know, we were kind of kings of the world at that moment. You know, in our little world, we were the kings. And um, there I was in this undefeated season, and I was a starter, and I was playing well, and we were playing well. We were beating every team. Um, in the middle of that season, I started having anxiety. And I had never had anxiety before. I, I didn't know what it was. I just, this feeling of like helplessness, this feeling of worry, this kind of like, you know, breathing quickly and my heart started beating hard and, and my mind started racing and I didn't know where, where, where was this coming from? Where is this worry? And anxiety? I've always been such a confident person, a confident athlete. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, God, what, what are you doing here? Because I had a relationship with him. I'm talking to him about it, but I don't understand why I'm feeling this way in the middle of an undefeated season and, and playing really well. Well, as I examined this more and, and I kept it to myself, I didn't want to tell anybody because I always wanted to portray this confidence that I had. Um, there was, um, I, I started understanding that I was thinking a lot about the future at this point. I was realizing, okay, what happens after this season's over? This is like the penultimate for me right now. This is everything that I've ever dreamed of as a kid, growing up, playing an undefeated season, winning a state championship, and I never thought beyond that. You know, I, I was so engrossed in my sport that I wasn't really thinking about the future from God's standpoint. I was thinking about just my sporting future. And, and uh, the reality was there were things to come. There were decisions to make. And there, at some point, there would be an end to my sports prowess. And um, it was at that time that God really kind of, I, I think he was allowing that worry and that anxiety to, to kind of cut underneath me and get, get into my soul a little bit because I had always been so confident and it, would all, it was always so much about sports that he was allowing me to experience that success but still realize that I wasn't at peace. I didn't have peace in my life regardless of the success I had um, on the basketball court at the time. And it was at that time that it, he really broke me and I hit my knees and I, and I said, God, you know what, none of this sports stuff, I, I, I know that it's been on the throne here and I need to take it off the throne. These are idols. That should not be in my life right now. And I said, I, I knew that, praise God, that I had people speaking into my life from the pulpit and from church and good friends that were saying, you know, um, talking about God all the time and how he, he is where true hope and true peace is found. And so I, I hit my knees and I, I went to, to him with that. And I said, God, I want to do what you want. I, I don't want sports to be this idol in my life. And things started to get a little bit better. He took some of that anxiety away on a daily basis. I was, I was trying to live my life for him. It wasn't about the sports as much anymore. It was more about like, God, how, what do you want me to do with today? It was a momentary relationship with him where, where I was meeting with him and, and we were conversing. And um, we ended up actually losing in the regional championship that year, so we didn't even win the state title. But God, God had... Um, through that season where we were undefeated had shown me something that that success that I was going to have and I didn't realize what was going to continue in the future but that success uh, was an idol and he needed to be number one okay so 
I moved on from there. I played baseball season, and, and we didn't, you know, win anything. And, and, but I, but I, at this point, I was ready to give my life to Christ. I was ready to, to go where he wanted me to go. And I was ready to give up sports if that's what he wanted me to do. And so I was planning on going to a small Bible college. I was going to study the Bible in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, they had a basketball team there, and I was going to play basketball. Uh, they didn't even have baseball. And, and so I just thought, I'm just going to go study the Bible here at this school and see where God leads me from there. And I went to, uh, the summer before I went to school there, after I graduated high school, I went to a scout day for baseball. My high school coach convinced me. He said, hey, Ben, this is a scout day that some of the, some of the coaches are putting on over here, and there's going to be some college scouts, and, and they want some of the good area players to be there. And, and so I was, I was an all-state, or I was not an all-state player in Illinois, but I was an all-area player. So I was good enough that they wanted me to come there just for some college coaches to, to see me. So I thought, well, what's, you know, what's it going to hurt? So I went to this, um, this scout day, and I, I, I really didn't do much at all. If you've ever been to one of those, if you're a baseball player, you probably have, but if you've ever seen one of those, you just basically throw a few pitches, you know, you take a few ground balls, you run a 60-yard dash, um, you, you take like 10 swings, and that's it. And you're standing around most of the rest of the day, and they're supposed to evaluate you based on that. And one coach after that day came up to me and he said, you know, Ben, I heard the first thing that he told me is he said, I've heard that you are a Christian young man. And he said, that's important to me because I am a believer as well. And he said, I am the baseball coach at a Christian school called Olivet Nazarene University up in Bourbon, a, Illinois. And we have a baseball program up there. And I just want to let you know that I've heard that you're going to Bible college. I think that's awesome. And I don't want to take away from God's will in your life if you know that's where you want to be. But I might give you a call um, if, if uh, you might want to come take a visit up at our school. And I thought, okay, you know, thanks for, nice to meet you. Thank you. And I, I didn't really think much of it. Well, a week later he called. And he called and offered me a full ride scholarship to go play baseball up at that school. And I thought... Okay, Lord, are you trying to tell me something here? Is this an opportunity, a door that you're opening up for me? I didn't know, but I, th I started praying about it, and, and I started just feeling like this was something, a, an opportunity that God was giving me to get, go to Christian school, which is where I wanted to go, and to uh, be able to continue playing sports, but to play them for him, and to allow this to be his thing, not mine. And so... I decided to go up to Olivet, and I, I, that was the first time in my life I had ever focused on one sport. I started focusing on baseball alone all throughout the year, and I um, got much better, and I grew a little bit more. Um, I ended up being an All-American there. I ended up transferring down to Dallas Baptist University uh, in Texas for my senior year, and I did w really well there as well. And then Houston Astros drafted me in the sixth round um, after my senior year of college. And so here I was now, I, I'd grown up in a small town, and I never knew anybody that played professional anything. Um, that was so far out of my mind as a kid. I, all I could think of was high school state championship. That was the furthest I thought it would go. And the Lord led me to Olivet Nazarene University. He led me to Dallas Baptist University, and now he's leading me into professional baseball. And um, I had just started dating my wife, Juliana, um, at the time. And so he, he, he was kind of bringing these things into my life and allowing me to experience a lot of blessing, really. So I enter into professional baseball, and, and I start the process of playing every day. And uh, it's a grind for those of you that know much about baseball. We play every day. It takes a lot out of you because there's not very many days off. And, and uh, if you're an everyday player, you know, you're at the grind every day, trying to, trying to get hits, trying to help your team win, trying to... Um, keep your body healthy and everything that goes along with it. And I had success. My first two years in the minor leagues, I hit 300 just about everywhere I went. I mean, I thought, I thought, man, this is easy. Just send me up. Next level. Next level. Next level. Tell you know, get me to the big leagues. I'm ready. And in 2006, I was in Double A with the Astros, and they traded me to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays at the time. And my wife and I had just gotten married, and we're in a hotel room in Springfield, Arkansas, and. Uh, get a phone call and they say, hey Ben, thank you for your service to the Houston Astros, but we've just traded you to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. They'll be giving you a call shortly. Click, you know. It's like that and your whole, you know, your whole world changes, your whole location changes, every, you gotta move and everything 
goes along with it. And, and it was crazy, but I got traded over there and two and a half weeks later, I got called up to the major leagues. So this is just two short years, basically, two in a couple months after I get drafted into professional baseball that I'm going to play in the big leagues. And so I'm running out on that major league field for the first time. And I'm thinking, this is unbelievable. You know, like, look at this stadium playing against the best players in the world. This is unbelievable, God, thank you. This is a platform, I'm gonna use this for your glory. And I was so gung-ho about, God, this is, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you. And what I didn't realize, though, is the result, that, that idol of success was creeping in again. That idol of needing to achieve and always, uh, always thinking that I was gonna make it to the next level, right? And in 2006, I struggled at the end of the season there, but I mean, it's to be expected, you're in the major leagues. Well, in 2007, I was penciled in as a starting shortstop for the team. Showed up and thought I, I had the job in the bag and I did well in spring training. And then the first couple weeks of the season, I struggled. So I didn't, you know, I didn't think too much of it, but then they sent me down to AAA. And it was like the biggest blow of my whole life at the moment that they sent me down. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous. You're getting demoted from the big leagues to AAA, but you know, you're still in professional baseball. It wasn't like I got fired. But to me, it was like, this was the first time in my whole life I had set my heart and mind to do something, and I couldn't do it. And I could not achieve that at the moment that I wanted to achieve it. And it was like, it was like once again, the Lord was showing me, you know what, you've, you've allowed this success, this achievement to be an idol in your life. And you, and you want this more than you want me. And that, that year was the roughest year of my life by far. Um, I, I, I started getting depressed. I started wondering, God, why am I even here? What do I need to, you know, what, why am I even playing baseball? Is this what, really what you want me to do? Should I be doing something else? And I kept questioning basic things in my life. Um, I put my wife through a whole lot of, um, I just, was, I just was, was mean basically that year. You know, throughout the season, I just was negative the whole time. And even when I got called up to the major leagues back in, uh, July of that year, after I had been down in AAA for a couple months, I got called back up, and I wasn't even happy about that. I was miserable. You know, I, I was just mad. I was like, what are you doing, God? I don't understand. Is this my life? I'm AAA up and down. And, and, and what he was doing right there is he was, he was teaching me that my heart was not really for him and what he wanted. Because you know what? The bottom line is there are some times where God doesn't want success for your life. Sometimes you're going to go through really terrible things in this life. And my life has been extremely blessed compared to most people. And yet here I am throwing a major fit and getting depressed about getting demoted. There is something majorly wrong with that. You know, I'm still basically a millionaire making tons of money. You know, I get to play a game for my job and I'm miserable at it. And, and the reality is there's a lot of people that are extremely successful in this world, in baseball, anywhere else. And you can pursue success and you can have it and you can reach it. And that does not mean that you're going to be at peace. And that does not mean that you're going to be satisfied in your life. You know, and, and God was helping me come to the grips of this, thankfully. And uh, at the end of that year, kind of after going through the ringer, you know, and, and talking to my pastor and kind of being counseled about the whole issue, the bottom line was I needed to repent. Repent of this great need that I had to achieve and succeed at this earthly level. And it's always, it was, it was all about me. You know, at that moment, I was, I was, so, I was such a perfectionist, such, so egotistical, and, and everything was about me and my career and my job and, and how I can serve God. You know, like, you can, even, you can even minister to God in a selfish way. Right? You, can, you can do things for God. Right, You're saying, this is for God. I'm doing this for you, God. But the reality is, you're doing it for you because it makes you feel better. You're doing it because it... And, and I'm talking about myself here. I'm not pointing any fingers. I don't know where you guys are at. But this is, this is what was going on in my heart. You know? and, and it's not about what you do. It's about where your heart is while you're doing what you're doing. You, know? you can be going through all the right motions. Right? And everybody from the outside, oh, you're such a great Christian, you're such a servant. And, but the reality is, God knows your heart. He knows what's going on in here, why you're doing what you're doing, what your motivation is behind it. 
And my motivation wasn't out of love and thankfulness for what he had already done for me. It was out of pride, out of wanting to be this perfect Christian, wanting to be this perfect role model, this perfect ball player. You know, I, I wanted to be perfect. And what God taught me through that is that I'm not. You know, I used to look in the mirror and be impressed. <laughs> Imagine that, right? But now I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm no longer impressed. I've been through some things and I've seen where my heart really is without God. And it's, it's not impressive. It's not impressive. The only thing that really is impressive, I can't be perfect. But there is a life that I should be looking at that was perfect. And that's Christ. See, Christ came to be what we couldn't be, to succeed where we couldn't succeed. You know, I mean, we can have a lot of earthly success and, you know, win a Super Bowl or, or win a World Series or, or be an all-star or, or, or make it to the next level. But the reality is there's always, if, you're, if that's your goal, there's always going to be a next thing. Why do so many of the greats have a hard time hanging it up? Why? Because they've been trying to achieve this for so long that they, they don't know how to let it go. There's nothing else to achieve. So then they have to, you know, even after their body gives out, they got to achieve something else. I don't want to be like that. I want to be at rest and at peace in whatever I do, knowing that I'm giving it my all for what has already been done. You know, when Christ hung on the cross, he didn't say, it's almost done. Now you go do your part. Now you finish it, finish the job. No, he said, it's finished. It is finished. If you have no peace, if you have no satisfaction, if you have no true confidence in your life that doesn't come from you but comes from outside of you, that only comes from Christ. That's where that peace, that's where that confidence comes from. And I know that there are many in here that maybe have never put their confidence in Christ. And then there's, there's many in here that have, but have allowed something else to take the throne. And they're, they're trying to find their peace and their satisfaction in life and their hope from something besides Christ. Besides Christ. Take it from me. And some of the few things that I've been through in my life to this point as an athlete, um, as a Christian, that your true hope is going to come in Christ alone. Not a focus on what you do on a daily basis. Uh, yes, we all have things that we are, have to accomplish in the day, have to be faithful with in the day and do the best that we can. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking away from that at all. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great, I'm a believer in hard work. Hard, hard work. I, I think that God even asks us to do that. But do not allow that to be your identity. Your identity cannot be based on performance. It cannot be based on achievement. That cannot be you. If it is, it will end in chaos and destruction for your life. It will, it will go nowhere. Your identity has to be in what has already been accomplished. It has to be in Christ alone. And then when you go and you play and you, you don't do the best that you want to do and, and you're giving it your all but you can't be perfect, at the end of the day you can still be at peace. You can still rest in what has already been accomplished. And then you, you have freedom. You have rest. You can go out the next day and give it even more than you gave the day before. But I'll tell you what, if you, if you make, if you put yourself on the throne and make achievement your God like I have in my life at times, you will be a tired person. You will reach the end at some point. And thankfully, God has allowed me to reach that at times in my life. And he's still on a daily basis. He's, he's chiseling away at that hard heart that I have. And, and I am still a work in progress, you know, but there, thankfully the Lord has shown me some of these things in my life. And, and I pray that he does the same for some of you as you continue in your relationship with Christ. If you've never put your faith in Christ, man, that's where it's at. That's where your hope is really found. That's where your satisfaction is found. You will find a whole new motivation to life, a whole new purpose for life that goes far beyond a court, a playing field, wherever God has you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much.